So we're going to be replacing all of these capacitors and uh, that means removing them all. So that's what we're about to do next. And you'll notice that all of the potentiometers are still missing. Why don't we simply replace the potentiometers and then move on to the capacitors? Well, there's a number of reasons for that. One of them is that uh, the board is filthy and we'd like to clean it. It will be a lot easier to clean when uh, we have removed all of the capacitors. We'll be replacing all of these 4558s, these op amps and these DIN 8 sockets. There are about 20 of these. And what we're going to be doing is uh, putting in sockets. So we'll pull out the actual chips and then we'll put in sockets. Then once we've done all of that socketing, before we put in the op amps, before we put in the replacement potentiometers, and before we recap, we'll give the board a thorough cleaning. That way we're not exposing the new capacitors, the new potentiometers to any solvents that we're using in that cleaning process. And we can get the board nice and clean uh, before we repopulate it. One thing I want to make you aware of is that just as a reminder, there are actually three boards here. There's the main board, the so-called voice board, and then the switch board here. And the main board and the switch, the the uh, the voicing board, are actually connected with these jumpers. There are three here on the uh, top side of the board, and then there are, gosh, I don't know, nine, seven, whatever. Uh, down here towards the bottom side of the board. The boards are stabilized by these metal bars. We're not going to be taking this apart, but you may want to refresh these solder joints before you uh, put the boards back in the instrument uh, because they may be subject to a certain amount of stress as a result of the flexing as we're doing all of this manipulating of the boards. So just keep that in mind that these are the only things holding these two boards together electrically. We want to make sure that those connections are really well established before we begin reusing the instrument. You can see again that the, the back side of this board is quite filthy with a lot of residue as a result of uh, removing the poten potentiometers. So we'll be cleaning all of that off as well before we repopulate the board. So let's get busy. How are we going to do this? Uh, I'm just going to do it old school rather than using a, uh, a solder sucker or a desoldering tool per se. I'll be using my soldering iron and just pulling these out one by one. And uh, I'll show you how I do that. Uh, I'll just give you a couple of examples and then, then move on because I'm sure you don't really want to watch me do this all day. Uh, so I'll start with these guys up here. Just orient yourself to where you are on the board so you know which which uh, device you're desoldering. And here I'm, I'm pretty sure I've got C79 in my fingers as I speak. And I'll just melt that solder joint, move the capacitor from one side to the other, melt this solder joint, move it in the opposite direction, and repeat. There it's come out of that one side, let it uh, melt, and there you go. And you can see that there's remaining solder blocking that hole and we'll be cleaning that up of course before we repopulate the board and there's the capacitor the offending capacitor and I'll just put that over here in the bin and move on Let's see if I can give you a slightly different view of this whole process I don't know if this is going to be any better or considerably worse Heating up one lug, pulling the capacitor to the side, or in this case down, heating up the other lug, the downward 
lug and at the same time pulling the capacitor up. Repeat. There you go. Out she comes. You don't want to be too rough with this process because there is the potential to rip out uh, one of the pads or rip off, tear off one of the pads. So you want to be relatively gentle with your soldering iron tip and also yanking on the capacitor so you're not ripping a pad off and dragging it through the hole. Just do a couple more and then uh, let you folks go off and enjoy your day <laughs> while I do this. You'll notice one thing I'm not doing is I'm not digging around on the board with my soldering iron. Just placing it here, waiting for the heat transfer, and then pulling on the capacitor. Do not be scraping these traces with your soldering iron. They'll come right off. Again, this board is a lot better than some I've seen, but we do not want to have to repair any traces. A couple of other examples here, and you'll see again, we're leaving behind quite a bit of solder, but we'll clean that up later. There we go. Yet another capacitor, only about a hundred or more to go. So here's the 808 with all of the potentiometers and all of the electrolytic capacitors removed from both the main board and the voice board. Uh, that took maybe an hour and a half, two hours or so. Um, and I managed to do that without ripping more than one trace. There is a trace that has got some minor damage on it, which is located right here, but I'll repair that. That's just a lead that uh, connects two capacitors together, uh, the negative terminals. And uh, when I pulled it out, when I pulled this capacitor out, it pulled out one of the vias uh, because the solder wasn't adequately melted. And that's the sort of thing you want to watch out for when you're doing this kind of work. <clears throat> now, in addition to that, uh, you'll see that a lot of these uh, holes are still filled with solder. And so that's something I'll be addressing, of course, before I put back the capacitors. But also, I'm going to be removing all of these op amps and uh, putting in sockets. And I'll be doing that as well before I replace the capacitors. I'll clean the switches as well and uh, then we'll be ready to start repopulating the board. Well, now that we've removed all of the capacitors, potentiometers, and op amps from the main board and the voice board, replaced the op amps with sockets for the new op amps, cleaned the board, we're ready to recap. And so I have quite a few capacitors which need to go onto the board. And what I've done is I have gone through the schematic and enumerated them all and then drawn up a map uh, for both the main board and the voice board that uh, will help me with the capacitor placement. Because the last thing I want to do is inadvertently 
put a capacitor in backwards or put the wrong value capacitor in the wrong place. So these maps will help me. Uh, in addition, I've uh, made a map of where all the new potentiometers will be placed and we'll get to that later. But first, to the recapping of the 808. Well, this is our 808 recapped. We've replaced about 85 capacitors, these electrolytic capacitors, all of which were approximately 40 years old. We've replaced them with brand new Nichicon Fine Gold Series caps, and uh, they should last another 40 years or more. Fine Gold R, an audio grade cap from Nichicon, very uh, reputable brand. There is uh, a couple of things that I wanted to share with you uh, in hindsight in relation to working on these boards. The boards are different in uh, more than one regard, not just in appearance, but in the way that they're manufactured. The main voice board is a double-sided printed circuit board, whereas the so-called voice board is a single-sided circuit board. And so they have different considerations when you're uh, working on them and replacing capacitors. With respect to the single-sided board, one of the things that you have to be aware of is the fact that there's very little holding the traces onto the board. And so there's tremendous potential to pull a trace off when you're removing the old capacitors. So you have to be very careful uh, of that possibility. Make sure that your soldering iron or whatever it is you're using to desolder the capacitors is uh, hot enough. Uh, be quite gentle and if you do indeed uh, damage any traces, don't panic because these things can be fixed, but make sure you make a note of it so that as you're recapping or replacing the components, you can go back and uh, fix the damaged trace. Maybe put in a jumper wire, whatever is necessary. Uh, you haven't destroyed your instrument, don't worry about it. With respect to the double-sided board, there are a couple of extra considerations in addition to the potential for removing a trace or, or damaging a trace. Um, you also have, <clears throat> in a number of places, vias. What's a via? Well, a via would be a, uh, a place where one of the uh, holes in the board is actually um, meant to be conductive and conduct electricity from one side of the board to the other side of the board. And so in, in that case, you may have vias which are meant to uh, make contact between not only the trace on the bottom side of the board, but the trace on the top side of the board. And those vias need to be retained and need to have enough solder to facilitate um, contact and conductivity from one side to the other. Now, if you damage a via, that may be not only more problematic, but it also may be less obvious to you. So be careful as you're uh, cleaning up the board after removing components and make sure that you inspect each and every uh, via. And if you see any damage, again, make note of it. And if necessary, uh, re repair the damage or check for conductivity between one trace on one side of the board and the other trace that's meant to be um, meant to be connected to that trace on the other side of the board and make sure that all of those uh, paths for current have been retained. So uh, just a couple of extra things to keep in mind when working on these older boards where the traces may uh, have lost their adherence to the underlying substrate over time. Okay, so what's the next step here? Well, um, we could repopulate our, uh, our op amps, but no, we'll wait until after we have uh, put back the potentiometers. Uh, so we'll put in the new potentiometers and uh, then we'll clean the back side of the board, get off all the flux and uh, take it from there. One other thing I wanted to share with you in relation to working on this type of older equipment 
is that uh, when you see all the, these components and some of them are tipped over on their side, it's tempting to bend them back into uh, the vertical plane like so. And that helps us with uh, our, our sense of order and everything looks nice and organized. Well, you can do that uh, with some of these electrolytics as well. You can move them from side to side. But one thing I really want to caution against is moving them in any way that would put undue pressure on the, uh, on the trace on the other side of the board. So this might be an example of a capacitor that's tilted to one side after I've replaced it, and that's my bad. I should have made sure it was oriented more uh, straight up and down. And so there might be a temptation to push it that way. Well, what that is going to do is put a lot of pressure on that, uh, on that uh, trace on the other side of the board and may actually tear it off of the board. And uh, that could result in, in problems that won't manifest for some period of time and would be difficult to track down after the fact. So if you have capacitors that are out of uh, the vertical plane and they can't be moved side to side but need to be moved front to back, if you will, leave those ones alone. Don't touch them. Don't be tempted to try and manipulate them uh, just for aesthetics. There's no point and you could damage your board. So onward and upward to the potentiometers. Thank you.